five maximal jumps that you can get. So yeah, jump up as high as you can, hands on your hips. When you land, reset your feet if you need to. But every jump, yeah, really put in 100% effort between each jump. Ready when you are. Go. Yeah, nice. Reset your feet. Beautiful. Awesome. Two more. Last one. Perfect. Good stuff. All right. So guys, come around here. I just want to explain a few things to you. So once we've recorded, um, and the friendly guys from Vol have told me I'm doing the old man way of doing this, but this is the way I've been taught a long time ago, and so I just need a bit of upskilling here. But when I go through the data, and I'm lucky enough to sort of spend a bit of one-on-one -on -one time with my patients and take the time and go through some of, some of this, I'm looking for a few things here. So I first go to jump height. I just want to see what their jump performance is like. So we're seeing here jump one, 31.8, jump two, 33.3, and so on. Best jump was 34.7. Average of 33.04 for the five. So that's, to me, a pretty good measure. I'm not sure what your previous jump height. Yep. Look, for someone that's going back to soccer, um, I'd probably, and a, a decent level, I'd probably want to be seeing at least a 35 centimetre you know, jump. You're, like, and you're not like the tallest bloke, but usually the shortest guys have got the most amount of power output. So, um, but look, that's always a nice sort of objective measure to sort of go back to and, and see. Um, some people are just na not naturally that great at jumping. That's cool. Um, but yeah, I, I'd sort of be looking at you know, 30, 35 to 40. Never hurts to have more jump height anyway, but your you scores there are pretty good as it is. It's the asymmetries here that I'm sort of probably spending a little bit more time sort of teasing out. So if we go over here to the top box, we've got the, the main forces of what's going on in Jonathan's legs on the way down as he prepares himself to jump. And you can see here, he swings a little bit left and right. So there's about 10% over on the left-hand side on the way down first rep, got up to 2%, went over to the right 6% a couple of times. And so that, that's a nice even spread. For a dynamic task like that, I'm happy to have a 10% swing through each individual jump. So average is out of less than 1%. So that, that's what I would say would be a really good result and a nice even distribution of your effort before you jump. You can see here now though, on the way up, you, you do go searching for more power and more force through that right hand side consistently. Once again, that's okay. Like your, the averages over those five reps was only 5%. Once again, keeping it under 10% is our standard there. When you're taking off, once again, you, you're searching through that right side a little bit more. Um, so for you, are you a right side? Like would you take off and jump up in the air off your right foot or your left foot? Yeah, so you naturally do have and favour your, your right side. Um, so that's, that's okay, and it, once again, it's under 10%. Here though, when you land is probably where it becomes really messy. Um, and once again, I don't mind messy, but as long as it, the messiness sort of sits under about 10 to probably 15% max swings left and right, and you can see here, one of your lands, you landed heavily on the right hand side, 50% extra. Um, second rep, nearly 30% on the left, back 20% on the right, and then you went 30% back over on the left, and then another 20%. The average looks bloody good because it takes it down to one, but you don't see the individual stories of each five of those reps, which is quite telling. So I'm probably not overly thrilled with, with this one, but it's okay because we've got time and we've got a little bit more training to do, but if we can shrink those, to probably a more consistent swing of about 10 to 15% rather than have these big swings left and right, I'd probably sleep a little bit more comfortably at night time if we had some better 